Hey again, welcome to another video. Um, I'm going to redo uh, my books on Norse mythology. My It was the second video I did when I started doing these, these videos. And it's kind of long and clumsy and uh, there's too many books. And uh, I redid my Greek mythology, my Roman mythology. So I thought it would be time to do the Norse mythology again. So this is Norse mythology, a redo or, or a reboot, whatever you want to call it. And there's going to be fewer books and it's going to be uh, a little more concise and slimmed down. Uh, 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 rather and less cumbersome than the original video. So um, in that video, like like this one, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, several types of books of introduction. Then the uh, the original literature and English translation, and then finally uh, one or two books that have to do with analysis. Uh, so when it comes to Norse mythology, you probably want to start off with a book that gives you. Um, that it's not a direct English translation of anything. That's kind of like a simple retelling of all the major stories. Uh, it's easy to read, straightforward. And uh, I've read a few of those, but none of them beats one of my favorites. The, the, this is uh, Myths and Legends of the Norsemen. It's an old book. It's by it's by H. A. Gerber. I'm gonna I'm gonna have these books uh, down below. Um, and uh, this book is is such a treasure. I uh, it was one of the first books I ever read on Norse myth, and uh, it, it has a little bit of everything. It's got all the major stories of of of, of the gods and the heroes, all in in one neat little book. Um, um, if um, if you want to try something else, uh, another book that's also very good. It's th this book. The only problem is that it might be a little dated in some areas, you know, uh, because it was written like something like over a hundred years ago. Uh, another book that's also kind of a really good general survey is this book here by Kevin by Kevin Crossley Holland, and it's simply called The Norse Smiths. Uh, this book has a wonderful introduction, and uh, the only problem with this book is that he he basically just talks about the myths that mainly surround the gods. He doesn't talk too much about hero stories, just just the uh, uh, just the gods, the stories involving directly to do with the gods. So otherwise, it's also a very good book. Now, getting in now, after you've kind of like uh, familiarized yourself with some some of the major myths, then you can move on to the actual text, the actual original text in, in English, of course, unless you know how to read Old Norse. Um, there's two major uh, sources of, uh, uh, well, there's others too, but, uh, but there's really, um, uh, usually there's, there's two major sources of Norse myth. Um, the first one is, they're both called Edda. Um, the first one is called the Poetic Edda. Uh, it's called the Poetic Edda because uh, most of the stories in here are written in verse. It's poetry. Um, this goes back to around, uh, well, the poetry goes back much sooner, but I think it was first collected around the 12, 1300s. I'm not really sure. Um, and it's, they're anonymous poems. And uh, and they're, they all have to do with uh, the gods and heroes uh, of the North. And uh, uh, this translation is, I've read several translation of the, translations of the Poetic Edda. This one I found to be the most complete. Uh, sometimes stories are left out here and there, uh, but this one has literally everything. Um, and it's, it's a translation that's put out by Lee M. Hollander. And uh, uh, the only problem with this book is that it's, he's, uh, it's a little hard to read. I mean, the English he uses is a little, a little fancy. Uh, it's not exactly very simple modern English. Uh, so if you want to move on to something a little more modern, a little, a little, a little simpler to read, um, you can go on to this more modern, more easy to read translation by uh, Caroline Larrington, and it's called The Poetic Edda. Um, and this one's put out by World's Classics. Um, this one is put out by Texas. It's put out by Texas. Uh, so either one, either one is really good. And they give it, they supply us uh, uh, with a lot of stories from Norse Smiths. Um, sometimes this poetic editor is called the Elder Editor. It, it, it's no longer it's no longer really called that anymore. The word Edda has to do with poetry. Then there's another 
another book that is the other great source of Norse mythology, and it's also called Edda, but it's called, unlike the Poetic Edda, it's called the Prose Edda. And unlike the Poetic Edda, which, is, which has various anonymous authors, this has only one author, and we know who he is. His name is Snorri Sturluson. And he, he lived... Uh, he lived around the 13th century in Iceland. Um, uh, a lot of the, uh, the, the prose editor and the poetic editor were both collected in, uh, in Iceland. We have the Icelanders to really thank for keeping, keeping Germanic myth alive uh, with these books. Uh, so Snorri Sturluson wrote the prose editor, and it's called the prose editor because, as you would think, it's mostly written in prose. Um, he wanted to... Uh, he he uh, and the purpose of this book is is uh, he was a he was a a lawman uh, a leader uh, uh, a uh, uh, a scholar and he wanted to uh, uh, he wanted to write a handbook that would help teach people uh, how to write poetry uh, so hence he uh, that's the purpose of this he, and and for his material he uses the Norse myths so he gives us a lot of Norse myths uh, this translation is a very classic one it's by Jean I young um, uh, uh, the only problem with I really enjoyed this translation it's a lot of fun to read the only thing is is that uh, it's not a 100% complete translation if you want a complete translation there's another one put out by Anthony Anthony Falks and it's simply called Edda. Uh, I don't think Snorri purposely wanted to call it Prose Edda. Right? I think he simply called it Edda. I think it's later scholars that decide to call it Prose Edda. But the original title is simply called Edda. And uh, so this is the same book, Snorri Sturluson, although this version by Anthony Fox, put out by Everyman Library, is 100% uh, complete if you want to read every single word. Um, Another another book that is doesn't is not given. Oh yeah, before I move on to that book, Snorri Sturluson wrote a lot of stuff. In addition to writing the other, he wrote something else, a really long work called the Hames Kringla, and this translates as the history of the kings of Norway. And what this is is that this is a series of sagas, and and this is the type of epic literature that was written in Iceland called saga. And this was a series of sagas, each one having to do with a different king. Of Norway. Now, it's usually not a source book much for Norse mythology. However, the very first saga goes back into the mythical past, and it's called Inglinga Saga. I'd show you, but I don't have a physical copy of the of the Heims Kringler, but I'll write it down uh, for you down below. And uh, so it's called the Heims Kringler History of the Kings of Norway, and the first saga, Inglinga Saga, is it it it, it has some. Uh, mythical material, especially about the battle between the two sets of god, gods, the Azur and the Vanir. And it's uh, a lot to do with Odin and Frey. And uh, so it's definitely worth reading if you want to round out your knowledge of Norse mythology. So uh, before, uh, before I move on, I'm going to then talk about another source book for Norse myth. And it's, it's a book that a lot of people don't talk about as much, but I think it's also very important. And it's by Saxo, it's by a, a Danish writer called Saxo. Grammaticus, and it's called The History of the Danes. The original title is, is uh, Gesta Denorum, and it translates to The History of the Danes, Books 1 to 9. Books 1 to 9 deals mostly with mythological material. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's very different. It's very different from the others. Uh, uh, however, it's very interesting. Uh, uh, there's a uh, uh, there's another book I'm thinking of that if you don't want to read the whole thing, there's a writer that took selections from this and he gave us another book called The Other Norse Smith, since it's not talked about. I'll have that book below. Um, uh, but this is the this is like a complete translation of books one to nine, and uh, it's very interesting. Although, but it's very it's very different than the usual myths that are usually talked about in books on Norse myth. Uh, like for example, the uh, uh, the story of uh, 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 the story of uh, Balder, for example, is very different, and uh, and also it has a very early version of the story of Hamlet for you Shakespeare fans. Only in this book, it's called Amleth. Take the H from the beginning and move it to the end, and it's called, uh, 
uh, it's Amleth. Uh, so there's this book by Saxo Grammaticus, the Danish writer, and there's another book that, if you don't want to read this whole book, uh, it's there's a book called the, the, the Other Norse Myths, which is mainly from this book, and I'll have that in below. Sorry for this video, I neglected to prepare for it. Um, now, um, in addition to in addition to all these uh, all of these works, I'm going to mention uh, another thing you should read. Remember when I said saga is is basically where uh, a lot of epics were written in Iceland. There's there's three there's several saga. Well, there's different types of sagas. There's many 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 sagas. Um, some of them uh, have to do with uh, the early settlers of. Uh, of Iceland. They're very family sagas. Others have to do with, uh, 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 what do they call it? Outlaws. Outlaws are very interesting in Icelandic society. So there's a whole set of sagas having to do with them. Uh, there's other sagas that have to do with adventures and, and stuff like that. But however, there's a group of sagas that have to do with long time ago in times past and these are the most mythological ones and i'm going to recommend three that i think you should read the most important and you probably heard of is the saga of the volsungs and this is the saga of sigurd the dragon slayer uh, uh there's several you know wagner you know talked about that story in his ring of the nibelungs well this is the actual saga uh saga of the saga of the volsungs this particular uh, the norse epic of sigurd the dragon slayer and this particular translation is by jesse biok and uh uh so this is the first you should read uh definitely another one you should read that i think is also very important is the let me see if i can find it in this book uh Let's see. Uh, let me find it. Okay. It's uh, the... Oh, sorry. I got the wrong book. Anyway, whatever. Uh, another book is uh, is called The uh, the Sagner of Ragnar Lothbrok. That's another one. Uh, usually that's seen as a... Uh, uh, a sequel to the Saga of the Volsungs because in the original manuscript they follow each other. However, uh, the two of them are really very separate sagas. They don't really have that much to do with each other. And if that name sounds familiar, Ragnar Lothbrok, that's the main character in that in that series, Vikings. Yeah, the Saga of Ra Ragnar Lothbrok is also a very important. Uh, it's also a very important um, uh, Icelandic saga, and it's it's great. It, it, it's a great uh, legendary story. I'm going to mention one more that's also very good. And again, Saga, Saga of Times Past. And, uh, and, and it's called, it's called King, it's called the Saga of Rolf Cracky or King Rolf and his Champions. King Rolf and his Champions. This version is housed in this other larger work, which is really a lot of fun to read. It's called Eric the Viking and Other Icelandic Sagas. And uh, and uh, it's it's translated by Jones and it's put out by Oxford University Press. All the sagas in here are good, but it's that last saga of Rolf Crocky that is the one that's very, it's kind of mythological and, uh, and stuff. So again, uh, I'm gonna write down those sagas below. And, uh, 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 and I'm going to mention two more books briefly. Uh, again, I mentioned how the Saga of the Volsungs, the story of Sigurd the Dragon Slayer, is probably, it's called the Iliad of the North sometimes because it seems to be the most primary story that comes down to us. It's not only talked about in, in its own saga, but it's there are snippets in the prose editor, in the poetic editor, so forth. But there's also further south in Austria, we have another version of it, and it's called. It's definitely worth reading. Again, it's not so much Norse. It's more. It's more of an epic that is well. It 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 derives from ancient Germanic mythology. Uh, of course, when the story traveled north and was written down in Iceland as Sigurd the Dragon Slayer or the Saga of the Volsungs, it becomes part of Norse mythology. However, in, um, in, in Germany and Austria, they, they also have their, you know, this is all, this is all part of the, Norse mythology is part of this heavy, bigger umbrella called Germanic mythology. So I don't want to call this Norse, I'd rather just simply call it part of Germanic, the, the greater umbrella Germanic myth. And it's basically the but it, but the stories are very similar. The stories derive from the same core of of, of legends that are passed down through the ages uh, of of Sigurd the Dragon Slayer, or in this version he's called Sigf 
Freed's. This is a wonderful, wonderful epic. It's one of the greatest epics ever written. It's It was written in Austria around the 13th century, and it's called the Nibelungenlied, uh, translated as the Song of the Nibelungs. And uh, this translation is it. Now, unlike the unlike uh, the Saga of the Volsungs, which is written in prose, this is written in verse. Uh, it's a great poem. Uh, we don't know the author, but this is the translation by Hato, and it's put out by Penguin Classics. And I'll promise just one more book, and that's it. If you're interested in, after reading this stuff, and you want a little more uh, analysis of what the Norse, Norse myths mean and how they developed, uh, you can't go wrong with any book by H.R. Ellis Davidson. Here's, here's the author, H.R. Ellis Davidson. She wrote a whole series of books on Norse myths, what they mean. Uh, I read several of them. I really like this one, if I'm gonna recommend one to you, Gods and Myths of Northern Europe. I really like this one because uh, it's very general. She covers a lot of stuff. And what's really cool about this book is that it even has a quick synopsis of all the major myths in case you didn't read it in the other books. You just you just want a taste of them. They, she really, she very, very quickly goes through the, the Norse myths very quickly. And then she talks about them in detail and what they mean and so forth. And it's uh, it's it's a wonderful scholarly little book on Norse myth, Norse myths. But she's written other books. For example, another one I could think of off the top of my head is The Road to Hell. Uh, I'll write that one below, even though I, I don't have a physical copy to show you. That book is really interesting because it talks about the ideas of the afterlife in the mind of the ancient Vikings and Scandinavians and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave comments below. And if you like this video, please subscribe and, and like.